right, that was a solo over the first 16 bars of the chord from Autumn Leaves with a walking bass in the left hand. In lesson one of how to solo while playing a walking bass, I used chord notes only in both the solo and in the walking bass. In this video, I'm going to include the use of passing notes, both diatonic and chromatic, and, and that's in the solo and also in the walking bass. So let's just revise what passing notes are. First of all, they are non-chord notes, and they pass between chord notes, which are a third apart. So if you take a, a C major triad, C is the root, E the third, G the fifth. You could have a passing note between the root and the third, which would be D, and between the third and the fifth, which would be F. Diatonic passing notes belong to the key that you're playing in. Chromatic passing notes are non-chord notes which have been altered. So, for instance, if you were going from, say, E to G, you could have a diatonic passing note, F, and then you could have a further passing note, F sharp, which is not in the key of C, going to G. It's important, therefore, to know what key you're playing in at all times when you are soloing. In the A section of Autumn Leaves, the first four bars are in the key of B-flat major. The chords are C minor 7, which is chord 2 in the key of B flat major, F7, which is chord 5, B flat major 7, which is chord 1, and then it's followed by E flat major 7, which is chord 4. The next four bars are in the key of the relative minor of B flat major, which is G minor, and they are A minor 7 flat 5 which is also, also known as A half diminished, and D7, sorry, that is chord two in the key of G minor, D7, which is chord five, and G minor. And that's for two bars, G minor. You notice that, that because it's a tonic minor, not a chord two, we are using either the major seventh, the sharpened seventh, or the sixth. Um, rather than the minor sevenths. The minor sevenths is sometimes used though when you want to create a kind of moving line thing there. Going from the major sevenths to the minor seventh to the sixth. And also on the second bar of G minor, um, you often play a G7, with, often with some altered notes, which takes you nicely back to the C minor uh, at the beginning of the repetition of the A section. Uh, so let's look at the use of the diatonic and chromatic passing notes in the bass line. The progression C minor 7 to F7 is a root progression of down a fifth. The root note C goes down one fifth to F. And this is the commonest chord progression that you'll come across and it's also the strongest chord progression. And therefore, you need to know certain stop ways of playing a bass line uh, for a down a fifth progression. So let's look at uh, what we can do. C going to F. Well, we can use this pattern. We can have a passing note, D, in between the root and the third of C minor 7. Remember, that's C minor 7 chord. C, E flat, G and B flat. And then we can have a chromatic passing note taking us up to F, the root of F7. So we can do this one. We can go root, third, fifth, and then a chromatic passing note taking us down to F. You can slightly vary those two patterns by displacing the first note, the C, up an octave. So you go, or another thing that you can do is put little, sometimes called ghost notes, like this. All these, by the way, sound better lower down. Um, you, do, you want to play in the same sort of area where a, a real bass player would be playing. Um, another one that you can play is just going root, 
seventh, fifth, chromatic passing note, taking you down to the root of F. Uh, or you could just simply walk down the notes from a B flat major scale, just going. Okay, so now let's look at the use of passing notes in the solo. In the pickup to the solo, I played this. So the implied chord there is a G7 chord. I used a passing note, a diatonic passing note, A, between the root and the third, but I didn't go directly to the third. I followed A with a chromatic passing note, taking me to the B, up to root, and then I used a chromatic passing note, taking me down to F, which is played over the C minor seven chord, and then onto the E flat. So you could think of the F as a, a passing note, taking you to the third, or you could just think of it as the 11th of a C minor chord. Um, a really useful way to use passing notes is to circle around a chord note. In lesson one, I talked about aiming for the third of a chord and trying to approach it from the seventh of the previous chord in a 2-5-1 progression. So, for instance, you could use this little figure going from C minor 7 to F7. Little arpeggio going up to the 7th and then on the F7 landing on the 3rd. Or you could start on the 3rd of C minor 7, go up to the root 7th and then land on the 3rd. So these kind of patterns can now be enhanced with the use of passing notes. Let's look at this figure. Root of C minor seven, seventh down to the fifth. Now we're aiming to go to the third of F7, but we do so via a chromatic passing note. So I've circled around the third of F7 before landing on it. You can circle around any chord note, but it's particularly effective around the third of the chord. Uh, the the non-chord notes do not always have to go between two chord notes. Uh, it's fine to actually approach a chord note from the note above, from the key that you're in, or from a semitone below. So you could approach, say, the third of uh, e flat, uh, the third of a C minor seven chord, which is E flat, from the note above F, go to a semitone below, and then to the third. You could do the same thing on the fifth. Go from the uh, note above, from the key that you're in, and then a semitone below, and then land on the the chord note that you're aiming for. Um, you can do another little pattern that you can do, say, from C minor 7 to F7 is this one. We can go... So on the C minor 7, we're using a, a chromatic passing note, B natural, taking us down from the root to the 7th, down to the 5th, now, instead of then going on beat one straight to the third of the chord, F7, we're delaying that by putting a chromatic passing note, G sharp in. And it stops everything from sounding too kind of rounded off, everything always starting on beat one, that. So, that's a really useful little pattern. Experiment with all these patterns, make your own up. And also remember when you're soloing, try and create variety by uh, altering the, the, the phrase lengths. Try starting on different parts of the bar. Uh, be careful not to always start on beat one. Um, and vary the lengths of the phrase. And also particularly important, the accents. 
uh, throw accents in, uh, you know, all over the place. The very often the accents come uh, on the offbeat rather than on, on the downbeat. Um, hope that was useful. If you found it helpful, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.